using for the first time. Unboxing. Open the package and take out the products and accessories. DJI SDR Transmission Phone Holder Kit and DJI SDR Transmission Tablet Holder Kit are available for purchase according to monitoring requirements. Power Supply Before first use, unfold the antennas and install the NPF battery. Insert the NPF battery into the battery slot and push it to the end. Make sure that the battery release button pops up, indicating the battery is firmly in place. In addition to using an NPF battery to power the device, DJI SDR Transmission also supports a USB-C power supply. Connect the PD adapter to the USB-C power and gimbal communication port on the transmitter or the USB-C power port on the receiver using a USB-C cable to power the device. The transmitter also supports a power supply from the gimbal. Taking DJI RS4 Pro as an example, Connect the video transmission LiDAR rangefinder port on the gimbal to the USB-C power and gimbal communication port on the transmitter using a camera control cable. This setup allows the gimbal to power the transmitter. Firmware update and device activation. After the device is powered, toggle the power switch to power on the device. When using for the first time, select the system language. The transmitter and receiver need to be updated and activated separately before use. For example, to activate the transmitter, follow these steps. Visit the DJI website and download DJI Assistant 2, Ronin series, to your computer. Connect the USB-C firmware update port of the transmitter or the USB-C firmware update and video output port of the receiver to the computer using a USB-A to USB-C cable. And then run DJI Assistant 2 Ronin series. Log in to your DJI account. Click the device icon on the home page to access the firmware update page. View the current firmware version in use and all available firmware. Select the latest firmware and click upgrade. Do not power off the device, unplug the cable, or remove the battery during the update. Wait for the update to complete. Make sure the firmware version of the transmitter and the receiver are consistent. Click the device icon on the home page and follow the prompts to activate the device. Buttons and ports. There is an air intake on the top of the transmitter and the receiver with four foldable antennas on the top and sides. On the front of the transmitter and the receiver are the touchscreen and the air outlet. The touchscreen displays the device status and menu settings. On the left side of the transmitter, there are HDMI and SDI input ports for receiving the video signal output from the camera. On the left side of the receiver, the HDMI and SDI output ports are used for outputting the received video signal to the monitor. On the right side of the transmitter, from top to down, are the power switch, link button, USB-C firmware update port, USB-C power and gimbal communication port, and 3.5 mm stereo jack. On the right side of the receiver, from top to down, are the power switch, link button, USB-C firmware update and video output port, USB-C power port, and 3.5 mm stereo jack. Toggle the power switch to power on or power off the device. Press once the link button to lock or unlock the screen. Press and hold the link button to enter the linking status. The USB-C firmware update port of the transmitter can be used for device activation and firmware update. The USB-C firmware update and video output port of the receiver can be used for device activation, firmware update, and video transmission. When used with the Ronin app, the port can output the received video signal to a mobile device. The USB-C power and gimbal communication port of the transmitter and the USB-C power port of the receiver can connect to an adapter for power supply via USB-C cable. The USB-C power and gimbal communication port can also connect to the video transmission LiDAR rangefinder port of the gimbal via the camera control cable to communicate with the gimbal and achieve gimbal control. The 3.5 mm stereo jack can connect to a headset. Two-way communication via the headset is enabled between the transmitter and the receiver in control mode. Each transmitter can only communicate with one receiver. On the bottom of the transmitter and the receiver is a quarter-inch threaded screw hole. 
touchscreen. When the transmitter is linked and connected to an input source, the battery level and input source status are displayed on the first row on the left side of the home screen. The Wi-Fi connection status and broadcast mode status are displayed on the second row. The control mode status is displayed on the third row. When the light A is on, control device A is connected. When light B is on, control device B is connected. In control mode, the channel in use, center frequency, device number, and video transmission signal quality are displayed on the right side of the home screen. Green indicates a strong signal, yellow indicates a moderate signal, and red indicates a weak signal. In broadcast mode, the current channel, center frequency, and device number are displayed on the right side of the home screen. When the receiver is linked and connected to an input source, the battery level and video transmission signal quality are displayed on the first row on the left side of the home screen. The video specifications, resolution and frame rate are displayed on the second row. The video transmission bitrate is displayed on the third row. In control mode, the channel in use, channel signal quality, and control device are displayed on the right side of the home screen. In broadcast mode, the channel in use, channel signal quality, and device number are displayed on the right side of the home screen. Slide down on the home screen of the transmitter to enter the menu. You can select device number, enable or disable the Wi-Fi in broadcast mode, adjust the audio volume and screen brightness. Tap fan mode and set it to standard, low, high, or rec low. Setting the fan mode to rec low may cause overheating. Tap color bars and to enable or disable it. When enabled, color bars will be displayed on the Raven Eye camera view when there is no video signal input. Tap help and scan the QR code to access tutorial videos, common troubleshooting problems, and view firmware version information. Slide down on the home screen of the receiver to enter the menu. You can select the connection mode, switch the channel. In control mode, tap SDR channel to view the channel signal quality and switch channels. In broadcast mode, channels can be viewed but not switched. Tap low latency to enable or disable it. The frame rate will be converted to 60 FPS when enabled, and it will follow the camera's output frame rate when this mode is disabled. In control mode, slide up on the home screen of the transmitter and receiver to enter the SDR channel interface for channel selection. The color dot next to each channel shows the quality of that channel. In broadcast mode, slide up on the transmitter home screen to enter the SDR channel interface for channel selection. Slide up on the receiver home screen to enter the broadcast interface, allowing for the device number list to be refreshed and the selection of the connected transmitter. Slide right on the transmitter home screen to enter the Wi-Fi connection interface. Use the Ronin app to scan the QR code for quick Wi-Fi connection. Alternatively, slide up on the QR code interface to view the device name and password. Select Wi-Fi in the system settings of your smartphone or tablet. Choose the device name and enter the password to complete the connection.